Okay, in this video I'm going to look at an example related to friction. And don't really have an inclined plane with this one, but these, it seems like these problems often go together. Okay, so we've got a box weighing 100 newtons, and it's currently at rest on a horizontal floor. And the coefficient of static friction between the box and the floor is 0 0.4. And again, all that coefficient of static friction, it just tells us, gives us some measure of how hard it is or how difficult it is. How you can think about it is maybe like how rough uh, the surface is um, to get the to get the box moving. We want to figure out what's the smallest force F extended eastward and upward and at an angle of 30 degrees with a horizontal that can start the box in motion. So maybe, you know, you've got somebody holding on to a string here. Uh, it makes an angle of 30 degrees, and they want to start pulling that box uh, to the right. We want to know what's the, the smallest force that will start it moving. All righty. What I'm going to do is just make a little diagram here. Okay, so we've got our box here. We've got our box here. And that weighs uh, 100 newtons. So the weight of the box is just put it, pushing straight down here. So that'll be the weight of the box, which in this case is 100 newtons. Now, there's also a force, uh, we can call it M, that's pushing upwards on the box. And again, that's basically what's keeping it, right? It's the, it's the force so, that's being provided by the whatever, the floor or the table, that's keeping the box from falling straight down. So there's some uh, normal force that's, that's keeping it uh, exactly stable. Now, when we start moving it here, so when we start moving it, we've got this force... F, and again, we know that that makes an angle of 30 degrees. That's information that's given to us. So again, just like in the other examples, I'm going to break this down into vertical and horizontal components. So our vertical component would simply be F times sine of our angle, which is 30 degrees. And the horizontal component would be F times cosine of 30 degrees. And lastly, we've also got this friction, uh, this force that's due to, to friction that's uh, acting uh, in the opposite direction. It's resisting this motion to the right. So I'll call that little f for the force from friction. Okay, so if we, if we take the forces acting in the horizontal direction and set those equal to zero, what we're going to get is we're going to get that F times cosine of 30 degrees, so that's the force acting to the right, minus little f, that's going to equal zero. So, well, we've got that F times cosine, capital F of cosine of 30 degrees, it's going to equal little f. Okay, so you can calculate... Uh, cosine of 30 degrees after rounding, I'm getting 0.866, so multiplied by capital F. That's going to equal the force due to friction, and to get that, what we do is we take the, we'll call it mu sub s, so this is going to be the coefficient of static friction. And what we do is we multiply that by the vector perpendicular n, the normal vector. Okay, so that's really all we can do here for a second. Let me substitute in actually one more thing. So we've got 0.866 multiplied by capital F. We know that the coefficient of static friction, that was given to us as 0 0.4, but we can't really simplify more than that at the moment. Okay, so multiplied by our normal vector. But we can look at, let's see, so we've got the sum of the forces acting in the y direction. If that equals 0, so right when everything's just right in equilibrium, we'll get that, let's see, so acting upwards, we've got the normal vector n, plus we've got this f of sine theta vector, so f of sine of 30 degrees, minus the weight, that's going to equal 0. 
So we can substitute in at least a couple things here. So we have n plus, well, sine of 30 degrees is simply 1 half. So we'll have 1 half times f. We know the weight of the object. That's 100 newtons. So that equals 0. And what I did was I just simply solved for n. So, well, we can add 100 over. We'll subtract 1 half times f. And now we've got two equations, though. We have two equations uh, that involve f and n. So all I'm going to do is just a little bit of substitution. So I'm going to substitute that n equals 100 minus 1 half times f into my first equation. And then we can simply solve we can simply solve for f, and that's going to tell us the force, and that's what we wanted. So we have 0 0.4 uh, multiplied by n. So that's 100 minus, okay, so 1 half, I'm going to write that as 0 0.5 times f. And I don't know, I'm sure this is probably not too bad from here. So let's just simplify, though. So 0 0.4 times 100, that's going to be 40 minus, okay, so 0 0.4 uh, minus... 0 0.5, if we distribute 0 0.4 times 0 0.5, that's going to give us simply 0 0.2 times f. If we add over, so if we add 0 0.2 f to both sides, I guess that's going to give us 1.066 f equals 40. And if we divide both sides by 1.066, 1.066. That's going to give us our solution. It says we're going to need a force of, I got 37.5, and you know the weight of the box was in newtons, so our force will also be in newtons. So it says it's going to take a force of right at 37.5 newtons to get that box moving.